doodling. <laughs> he said, so you really didn't come up with an estimate? No. Why do we need two? <laughs> he didn't. You're working no, on it. You walk the house. No, you're working on it. This was your idea. I did, told you I don't want to be a part of right. the painting industry. <laughs> oh. Why are you asking me for mine? You're, you're not confident in yours? He says, I can't believe you don't even have a number. Huh. I said, all right, I'll work on one. I'll yeah. just, I'll, now, we're, now things are getting a little heated. Fine, I'll appease you. I'll work on one. How far does he on a paint go? He looked at me with this, 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 everything went from red to white. He looked like a ghost. He says, are you, you've been in the industry this yeah. long? Dad taught us when we were 14 years old. You've been painting since you were 14 years old. I still have no idea. How You're 33. You really, are you serious right now? I said, yeah, I just, you want to get serious. Let's get serious. Yeah. How far is it going to paint go? He said, I can't even believe I'm going to answer this for you. <laughs> he said, I'm really, you really are, you're serious, aren't you? I said, yeah. He says, all right, forget it. Let's just go with my estimate. <laughs> then why did you want a number after all? I got, I'm all fired up at that point. Why did you want a number? He said, you don't know how to do estimates. I said, do you think if I knew how to do an estimate, you'd be sitting here with me? Yeah. Yeah. No! I didn't realize that part of the time. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> I, I figured he had at least some clue on how to do an estimate. I know how he to was, paint. He knows how to paint. No. And show right. the paintbrush, and that was about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That I was, get uh, that, though. I mean, that's a whole other side of the business. People don't know that. And even Buck, he had no idea. He never heard that story. Yeah. And now when you, anybody sees me being mean to Sam, you all will understand a little more why. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as... The years progressed. It went, you know, over the next two years, I would, once we landed jobs, mm -hmm. I would sit in my vehicle two blocks down watching. And just, they could see my vehicle, the mm -hmm. employees. I'm watching. And I'm telling you, it, it would go four to five hours. I'm sitting there and I'm documenting right. every hour, looking at the weather, looking at the humidity, mm -hmm. looking at dew point, watching what structure, what surface they're on. They're on block. They're on wood, they're on aluminum siding, they're on vinyl. Right. And the guys were getting really upset with me, thinking, oh, you don't trust us, you've got a spy on us. I'm tar I'm trying to learn how to bid. Well, exactly. <laughs> I'm teaching yep. myself how to do estimates. How long are these jobs going to take and what different conditions? And trust, me, your com on. trust me, your competitors aren't going to teach you how to bid. And if no. they do, right. be leery, because they're probably right. not going to... They're, they're, going to hold some things back mm -hmm. or give you some misinformation yes. absolutely and i yeah. said this the best way to do this is just to and it, this went on for months and i had all these numbers it was ridiculous mm -hmm. i had all these papers all these numbers i'm documenting i'm rearranging i'm putting this together they're like what are you doing i mastered it i felt that i mastered it. i figured it out <laughs> so then you years the code. so then years later <laughs> I, years time. later i pick up joe and said let's go on an estimate i need somebody ironically it was here at the boston store yeah okay we had to measure everything right it was here at the boston store do you remember this yes we were at the day. boston store <laughs> and i pulled the walking stick out and gave him pen and paper and i start measuring at the end I'm doing all these different formulas. I got three formulas going on. And he looks over at me. This is the one that laughed at me. Remember? Mm. He's getting really upset with me because I didn't know how to do estimates. Right. He looked over at me. We're sitting in a vehicle, and he looked over at me and said, what are you doing now? <laughs> I said, I'm doing an estimate. He said, how did you end up getting that involved? What it, what's that even mean, and what's this mean? I understand that one. I said, yeah. <laughs> yes. You see, that's the thing is, I was always good at like judging the amount of time that you mm -hmm. know it would take a regular painter to do the things. Okay. I never had to figure out the actual math behind it that Sam went and did, and actually figured out square footage. Okay. And broke it down to you know the science level. He's mm -hmm. got an actual algorithm going. Exactly. I, had an algorithm. I I'm shooting from the hip every time, and he brings in a you know a computer. <laughs> and I knew how fast this person moved based on their body weight and dew point and humidity, mm -hmm. temperatures. And I, I broke it all down. I'm some, I've spent months just sitting there, like, yeah. analyzing all of this. I had to figure this out. If I don't figure this out, if I don't teach myself, I'm going to fail in this industry. And when we went into business in 2006, the whole industry, we remember this. We still use this slogan, mm. give them a year and they'll fail. Yeah. yeah. That's our I, motivation. That, yes, slogan. that's our motivation still. So thank you, Erie.
Well, I'll tell you, too, that's a quick way for somebody to fail no matter what sort of work they do. If they're in, if they're in work like yours, a construction or whatever it is, is to have estimates that aren't accurate. That's that yeah. is the quickest way to fail. Absolutely, it's dangerous and it can bury your company on one job. Yes, Especially and I'll be the first one job, to tell you. Be gone. As much as I broke it all down and feel that I've gotten as close to I can to, to, to mastering it, I've made more mistakes than you could ever imagine. I still keep making them. Yeah, yeah. That's well, but it's also you're you're chasing a target too because as technologies change, as techniques change, as your as their surfaces. You're not painting the same kind of surfaces that you know people were painting 30 years ago Correct. with the same kind yes. of paint, and that changes everything. Yep. And those who are listening, those who are watching, we're not the best. No. There's no such thing. No. Who's the best? Who cares? You see, that's where I, I will argue with you a little bit because I say that we are the best because I'll go back and fix it. Yeah. Correct. Yes. <laughs> that's, Correct. Right. that's a great point. Yeah. So that's yesterday, what makes us the best, in my so opinion. Yeah. Joe doesn't know this, but yesterday, Buck and Dave Grove, very experienced painters, called me and said, hey, can you stop by the job? We have a problem. I'm like, what, what kind of problem can there be? You're doing three bedrooms and a small bathroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? We're not doing any woodwork. We're doing ceilings and walls. It's a simple job. Bro. So... I thought if they're calling me because they have a lot of experience, I I, I might instead of venturing, you know, taking this adventure by myself. I called Chris Herman, our Sherwin Williams sales rep. Chris is awesome, smart, and I said, Chris, can you meet me over here? Mm -hmm. Give him the address. He said, Yeah, that's fine. So there you have it, Buck. (laughs) Tell him what happened. We had a mess. Oh yeah, it was. uh closer closer it started uh boxing which is where the trim closer. around the outside um it has a darker look right. than Flashing. where the roll yes. is yes and it usually as long as on the second coat you get it while it's still wet you trim it all out and you hit with the roller mm-hmm. while it's all wet you get a nice smooth painted wall even, even finish yeah. yeah um and it for some reason, it was boxing even after the third coat in one of the rooms, and it, it just it made no sense. Um, it was light colored walls to begin with, and it was just eating the paint. Mm-hmm. So at that point, me and Dave, we, <laughs> yeah, we're, you, I mean, at that point, we're right, we're getting into a time frame where it's like, okay, we're going to start losing money, right? This room and if we, time. yeah, if we keep throwing more and more paint on here, we're going to run out of paint, and we got to stretch that. Uh, it, it, we get to the point where it's okay. We need to call Sam and mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, get some information. Get the, yeah, yeah, get the okay on this before we waste any more money on on the job, right? And when him and Chris had come over, they finally had. But we all got together and had come up with the drywall. It was painted, but never primed. It was never primed. Ah. It was never, they ah. see it. never primed it. So and all the paint they're putting on is just, it's Something drinking right it. Right. Just drinking just, it. Right. And he climbs up on the ladder, the four-foot ladder. He's trimming. He gets down, moves his ladder, climbs back up, and it's dry already. Right, because mm. it's just being soaked. So yeah. instead of like we, we, we talk wet on wet, Yep. He's now painting wet on dry, which right. is flashing. Yep. Right. All the way around the room every time they do it. Yep. Yeah. And it's... That's rough. Yeah. We've, no. None of us have ever seen that to that degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, we were all troubleshooting. We were seriously troubleshooting, trying to figure out what to do. And mm. I'm not... Trust me, people. I'm not too proud to say, I'm not going to tackle this alone. Let's get Chris Herman. He's yeah. the brains. Let's right. get Chris Herman. Mm-hmm. Come on in here and help us. Because if Chris doesn't know, then yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. Then you that probably point. should just rip yeah. down the wall and throw right. it away. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Build, a, build a new house. Yeah, <laughs> between the four of us, we we think we may have resolved it. We're gonna we're going to attempt it. I said, let's start over like a new project. Let's order all the primer. Mm-hmm. Prime all the walls, start over. Prime all the walls. Hopefully that'll seal them. Mm-hmm. And leave the following day. That way it has recoat time, everybody. It's very important to have the proper amount of recoat time. Yeah. You think you can recoat it once it's dry, but dry doesn't mean it's set up or available to recoat. Recoat usually. I bet a lot of amateurs hours. make that mistake, right, yeah, Sam? That time. sounds like something people would do at home. The problem and it, is, is it takes time for paint to harden. 
Yes. Right. It doesn't. It, you know what I mean? It, the chemical reaction takes several hours to harden the paint all the way. Well, if you're trying to put paint on that's not hardened, you're just going to push it around the wall. <laughs> that's all right. you can do. Yeah. And mm. to be profitable as a professional, as a business owner, to be profitable, I'll be honest with you, it's really hard to follow those guidelines. Mm. Yes. Because you don't, you can't have six guys sitting around waiting four hours right. to repaint this. Mm-mm. So, do we follow that rule? Not usually. We, you know, we take the risk. We mm-hmm. take the chance. It's a high risk. If something fails, we go back and fix it. We never walk away. That's but we do take cool. a lot of risk. Mm-hmm. Every paint company does. You can't. There's no way. Correct. To make that Correct. Time. Everybody does. Make money doing this. You, you can't. can't wait for the yeah. dry time. There's so no what we're doing with this? I said, all right. Don't worry about the profit margins. Let's go in today. So they're going to go in today, prime all the walls, leave. Mm-hmm. Let's go back tomorrow. Paint one coat, leave. Let's go back the next day. Paint the second coat, see what happens. Right. That way there's plenty of recoat time. Well, at least you followed all the structure at that point. Yeah. All the science that you're supposed to follow at that point. And if it fails after that, you know there's something else obviously is wrong. Right. So yeah. we, had, we had the paint store put in put in a product that allows the paint to dry much slower. Mm-hmm. So he's not painting dry on dry. Yeah. yeah. He's painting wet on wet or wet on dry, I'm sorry. Yeah. So he's not painting wet on dry, he's painting wet on wet. Yeah. Right. So But now that's easy. the kind of solution that the 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 person painting their own house doesn't even know exists. Probably yes. couldn't even pinpoint the problem let yeah. alone yes. find the solution. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. not exactly a common one. So we were there. We're having them put in one to two ounces in each can mm-hmm. to see if that'll help us. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you keep it wet longer. You know, people think when they look at jobs, even if they're they're you know hiring folks like you to paint, they they think the jobs. I think a lot of the time are more simple than they are. It's just a couple walls, mm-hmm. um, and then you run into situations like that. Uh, that are unexpected and that the homeowner frankly doesn't know about yeah. you know it's not as if they called you in saying well you know try to make this work they don't know no, no yeah, that's true they yeah. usually don't have a clue is the problem yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then we've given and that's where sam usually runs into trouble is he's given an estimate that's for x amount of time but this happened yesterday keep going the problem is, is his estimate and now you're already at the estimate limit yeah. and you're to haven't completed the job because it still looks terrible. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest problem. That's where you know it comes in on us to you know put forth a little more effort when Sam does give these bids. And yes, <laughs> and fortunately for this customer, I want to say thanks because this customer actually approached myself and talked to me. And then when I left, Buck said he approached he and Dave and yes. talked to them. Because he said, I don't want you guys to take the hit on this. Yeah. Yes. And most customers don't let's, know. Let's do it right. Mm-hmm. And let's see where we sit at the end of the job. Because I initially told him, I won't do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was my mistake. I'll just eat it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he kept resisting. said, no, let me work with you. Well, that's, that's nice. You got a good customer. That's, that's sure. very yeah. rare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've had customers say, wants to give me a you. price. That's how it is. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. Oh, I can imagine that happens. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can, so people digging in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're in the process of doing that. We don't know if we resolved it, but we are going to attempt. Yes. It sounds like the right solution. If that's what Chris came up with, that's probably the way to go. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. But I know the feeling. It's like when they give me a commercial to do, and it's about 42 seconds worth of copy, and they say, you read it too fast. Well, it was supposed to be 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. If I read yeah. more slowly, it'll be eighty seconds. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. Uh, so yeah, you get in those situations, and and they don't understand the re- because they haven't sat down and ever done it themselves. Yes. yes. And they so they don't understand the realities of yes. actually doing it sometimes. Yes. So that's why estimates are very difficult and involved because I, I can't I can't come up with something like that. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. no way I would have been able to predict something like that. Right. right. The walls were painted already. Yes. They're not a white primer, people. They're a color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it also depends on how you word your bids. It makes a difference. A friend of mine is the way he does it is he allows for fifteen to thirty percent increase or decrease in the price depending on material. He's also a carpenter and not right. yeah. a painter. Right. So, so his could, rules yeah. are a little different and but he does that to protect himself because 
if the material cost goes up and he needs, you know, 50 sheets of oh, yeah. and the material cost doubles, he can't eat that. If he eats that, he's going to lose his company and two jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, it's AC. A, it's interesting you bring that up, though, because talking about not being able to get parts and materials, which we're all mm. dealing with like, yeah. right here, actually, that must have affected your industry pretty oh, severely. It, it, oh, it was, yeah. oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, still, it's still affecting it. Yeah. We will call... And we'll go through the paint store, and they say, well, we can't get this product. Well, yeah. can you call the next one? And from a yeah. painter's point and of view? And they say, no, we can't get it. Yeah. We No store in Pennsylvania has it. Right. We have to order this in. What do you mean nobody has it? We're starting That's, the job tomorrow. It's insane. Well, there's yeah. certain paints we like to use for certain things. Trim yeah. paint, especially, mm-hmm. when they don't have the same kind of trim paint that we like, <laughs> now we have to work with something that... Quite frankly, it's an inferior product. Mm-hmm. Yes. And now we have to struggle with that. Well, that adds more time to the job, which now comes into Sam's bid. And right. it's like, Sam's bid was great if we had the correct product. Yeah. But now so, that we don't have the correct product, it's actually, it's three times. Yeah. Sam's going to lose money. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to lighten things up again. I want Joe to tell you a story. Oh. It's about Tin Man. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> check this about out. But, on, but before, before he starts that story, I want to throw a shout out to Tim Sturgill. Roth Cadillac, he inspects our entire fleet. Thanks, Tim. Very nice. All right, take this. Go. All right. This This story is... is, (laughs) (laughs) This is me and Sam working for my grandfather almost 20 years ago. We're doing a roof for Lake Etz Gym, which is up Upper Peach Street somewhere. And we're doing all the aluminum roof coating. Sam decides it's really hot. It's like 95 degrees this day. So we both of us, we take our shirts off. We're both just in shorts. Sam hangs his shirt on one of the pipes that sticks out. Yeah. So we have pipes. Yeah, we end up, you know, we continue working. And we don't realize that now Sam's shirt is literally six slats away, like the entire length of a human body. We are at the end. We're we're at the end of the project. We painted it in, basically. We're working top to bottom. And we're about to step off the lat onto the ladder. Yeah, we're almost done. And I said. Hey! Hey, what about my shirt? My shirt's up there! <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, let's, let's go get your shirt real quick. I'll grab your hand and you can lean out. This okay. great. Lean this out great. and grab it. And <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam and I are both fairly athletic people, so this was like possible, okay. not a problem. He grabs my hand, he leans out, and then my foot starts to come off the roof. Oh. <laughs> and I got scared and I let go. I was like, well, I'm not going to let him pull me off the roof. The so if you fall. can use your imagination, what happened to me when he let go? Sam fell oh, into the thick right of the Right into paint. the lake. Right into the lake of the silver. Like Covered. head to toe, and that mouth, teeth. Tasted it, it. Yeah. eyes, <laughs> and he's and I can't get up. I'm stuck to the roof. stuck there. I'm stuck to the roof. And I'm yelling at him as much as he can. Help me! Hey, he's help like, me! <laughs> and he says, he, he's, "I can't." He's doubled over on the roof. He's crippled. I'm laughing he's so parent- hard I can't right. even breathe. <laughs> let alone help him. He can't, he's laughing so hard he can't I breathe. Stand up! And I'm screaming, oh, "Help yeah. me!" I'm stuck to the roof. Holding himself up with one arm. I'm stuck to the roof. Trying not to like land. I don't know how many minutes this went on for, but he was doubled over. He got he got his stomach stitches. Yeah, it had because he's laughing so hard. He had to have sat there for a good minute and a half in the lake. I I didn't know what to do. I couldn't get up. I'm stuck to the roof. What can you do? I'm trying to push, but the, the heat and the paint, and that, was, that was hot. It was, oh, yeah, it was hot, I was too. burning. Very hot. <laughs> and that metallic paint is oh, nasty. Yes. Like I said, yeah. 95 degrees stuff. that day. I'm telling hot. you. I look back. I'm trying to look back because I'm stuck to the roof. And I'm trying to see what he's doing. Because <laughs> all I can hear him. is he's almost like gasping for air. <laughs> he's laughing that hard. I he can't, can't get understand. enough oxygen. I can't understand <laughs> what he's doing because I can't see him back here. I can I, still I'm, see I'm him laying there. I'm trying to turn my head because I'm stuck to the roof. Every time. I can still like, see him laying there. It was like gorilla glue. I was stuck to the roof and I'm trying to turn my head. My legs are... You should have saw this. Well, anyway, I did end up rescuing him. He was completely covered in the aluminum. Them, so now, that's why I call him Tin Man sometimes. Well, now <laughs> I'm curious about the process of getting all that off. Oh, How oh, long man. did it take? Oh God, gasoline or paint thinner are your it, only hope. It was paint oh, thinner takes Lord. forever. It was, <laughs> and that's good for your skin. <laughs> oh no, it's it not. was incredibly <laughs> painful because oh. people. It dries very quickly. It, oh, yeah. it, it, yes. uh, it was on my eyelashes. It was on my eyelids. It was under my eyes. I had it on my lips. 
It was on my teeth. I had a on my oh. tongue. I, yeah, I, I'm trying to find out what's going on. Room. I'm yeah. licking the paint. There's actually metal in that paint. Yes, yes oh, there is. Crazy. Oh my lord. Oh. Oh, it, Not a it was I don't a even process. Want to, I don't even want to think it about was that. A it must have been, it was probably was what, so how long before it was all gone? I couldn't. Weeks? Get, yeah, yeah. Probably a couple weeks. weeks. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I could yeah. get off, most I of could it. get most of it right. off, and I was burning. I was on fire. I bet. Yeah. From the roof being so hot. And from then the material sticky The material being yeah. so sticky and hot. Wow. From putting, <laughs> putting the yeah. solvent on me to get it off. Yeah. That makes it even hotter. Oh, wow. it was a it was a nightmare. Well, all I can say oh. is I hope the past half hour was more pleasant than that. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Because we're out of time, guys. Oh oh, Sam, already. remind us once again how to get in touch with oh. Sam Catania Painting. Call Sam Catania Painting, 814-866-2600. We will see you next week, Erie. Before by government.com. Have you heard?